why, you may ask, am I doing another Carlos Soler video so shortly after the previous Carlos Soler video? Well, it's because the video will get a lot more views than one about Wes Fodrenham. Unfortunately, that's just the harsh realities of life. Poor old Wes, he'll get his own video at some point. I promise you that. No, well, a bit of that is true, but it's because the story has moved on since we spoke uh, yesterday, basically. Uh, it moved along during the day. Uh, Sky Sports News confirmed what, what you and me already knew, and that was that the deal was afoot. There was... There was serious progress and it was Darmesh and, and all the other usual players jumped in and said, yes, this deal is really happening. So the news as we knew it yesterday was that Soler had rejected the chance to join Real Sociedad because there was an imminent move to West Ham United. The Spanish press were, were shocked. I mean, this is a, somebody who's been capped, I think he's 14 times uh, by the Spanish team, played a couple of hundred times for Valencia. Bit of, a, bit of a legend over there in Valencia, I think it's fair to say that as well. Big news, but they were shocked. Why West Ham? Well, it's because West Ham are buying everybody. Why not one more? This would be signing number nine, and I think there may be ten. We're discounting the young lads, by the way. Uh, just, just sort of players for the senior squad. We speculated yesterday that maybe, just maybe, it's because the deal was taking a long time to do because, as we speculated yesterday, it was going to be constructed like the Jean-Claire Todibo one, which was going to be a loan for a year. Then it would trigger a, an automatic deal with, with an option to buy, an obligation to buy, should I say. That is exactly, we were right to speculate. We got that one right. Absolutely. That's exactly what is happening. It's now being pretty much confirmed by, well, by by almost everyone. All we're waiting for now is is Tim Stooges, basically. Plettenberg, uh, Fabrizio Romano to come in and confirm it. Possibly by the time I've uploaded this video, it will have already happened. The players keen to join uh, PSG are keen on the deal. I spoke yesterday about the pattern. This is following that familiar pattern, isn't it? Now, when I was thinking about it after I did yesterday's video, I was giving it quite a lot of thought. And it was this whole thing about Lopetegui's wanting two players for each position. And, and I thought, this is a must. This one is an absolute must. Because even if you consider that that's what he wants, even if you consider that he had Lucas Pacatar and it would be Carlos Soler for this position of attacking midfield and a number 10, whatever you want to call it, it's still really not two, is it? Because we are running the risk. We are walking a tightrope with Lucas Pacatar. The, the thing is, a lot of this stuff gets easily forgotten. And, and particularly by me, I get caught up in the razzmatazz. I get caught up in the drama of, of all these transfer deals that are happening. And, and I think that the big, juicy Hollywood stories, which are what they are, make you forget maybe sometimes the nitty-gritty stuff, the nitty-gritty stuff is still there, and that is that Lucas Pacatar has got uh, an FA investigation hanging over his head. Uh, there is still a high likelihood that he could receive a ban. Some say he won't, some say he will, but you can't be that confident as if to think he's definitely going to be here. Lucas Pacatar is definitely going to be allowed to play football forevermore for the rest of his career. You wouldn't put your house on it. You, you, might, put, you might put a couple of quid on it, but you wouldn't put your house on it, that's for sure. And as far as we know, all we've been told is, first of all, he said he's, he's likely to be able to play out the season because apparently the FA are struggling to get evidence, to collate all the evidence they need. But they've not got, so they've not got enough evidence to, that they think they can get the conviction or, or get the charge done now. They've charged him. But can they prosecute him in those terms? Can they do it right now? No. But they haven't got so little that they're going to drop the charges. The FA are confident they'll get him. They just want more time. And because of that, we were told, well, you know what, Pat is going to play out the rest of the season. Then we were told by a, a top club source, well, well, hold on, probably more likely half the season. So the club are expecting to hear back in sort of December, January. That'd be a crappy old Christmas present, wouldn't it? Let's be fair. We're expecting to hear back then. So make no mistake about it, even with Lucas Pacatar not having any disciplinary trouble at all, no betting investigations, none of that stuff, Carlos Soler would still be the guy, would be the second number 10, right? Um, with, with with him possibly going, not only have we got to get a second number 10, and we have to get somebody in who is going to be able to basically parachute straight in and become the number one. I don't mean a goalkeeper, by the way. That's where Fodrum's job. You know, I, I mean, you know, be be the first choice. I would have. I would suspect that even if 
pack a tar, he did get a ban, then we'd probably be looking for somebody else. I don't know what we'd do. Would we bring George Earthy back? I don't know what we'd do at that point. But Slayer becomes first choice. And the more I thought about it, I thought it would be completely and utterly negligent not to do that. Imagine not doing that and getting to the point where Pakatar had a ban and all of a sudden you've got nobody in there. I mean, I was discussing this yesterday. You know, you might... We, we were discussing in the in the Patreon player ratings uh, over well, over on Patreon, uh, funny enough, uh, myself and Gio, we, we were talking about Lucas, about Mohamed Kadus playing on the left and then he switched to the right. And I don't think any, well, certainly neither of us are particularly happy with him playing on the left. We, we think you lose something with him there. But he's either played left or right. There's been no inclination, as I mentioned yesterday, for Hulan Lopetegui to play him through the middle. So you can't really look at him and think, well, well, that's that's the guy that will play in as number 10. Look, as I mentioned, we've only got one game, right? All we've got is one game. You can take the friendlies if you want. We've got one game to use as evidence. One game. And that's all we've got to go on. So, you know, look, if we turns out in the next game against Crystal Palace, he could play Mohamed Kadus as a number 10 in that, and we'd have to rethink. But at the moment, the evidence suggests he sees him as a winger. And with that in mind, the, the Soler deal makes absolute sense. It really does. But I've got to say once again... I've got to praise the creativity of the, the, the ducking and diving, the bobbing and weaving that's going on to try and offset these the PSR regulations, to try and spread the payments with some of these players. We shouldn't really be able to afford to Debo and we shouldn't be able to afford Soler, bearing in mind all the other transfers we've made. But we've been so canny, so nifty and sort of nimble nimble footwork really in financial terms to spread the payments to make sure we're all right in PSR now I, I do I do there's a slight concern that we might be sort of mortgaging the um, mortgaging the family silver and uh, maybe making purchases based on future years income but I guess in certain terms, we were doing that anyway because we used to have sort of overdraft facilities and loan facilities, which we don't have anymore. I guess we're just, we're just doing it in a different way now. And I guess there is always the assumption with West Ham that we now, we used to be awful at buying and selling, <laughs> or both of them. I remember, I remember looking at, it wasn't too long ago, I remember looking at, looking at the team and looking at it with G and, we, and almost every player we had was worth less than we bought them for. Maybe four years ago, I remember Winston Reid being in there, and there was, um, but there was, there, there was every player that we'd had at the time. I think Winston Reid was coming to the end of his career, and we just looked and thought, how, how bad are we at this? I think you'd now look at it at West Ham and think, well, you know, even if we needed to recoup some money, we probably do have a number of players in the squad who are worth in excess of sixty million pound, and I'm being conservative with that. And, and that's never been the case historically. So I, I think, yes, I think there is a certain mortgaging on, on future income. But I don't blame us for doing it. It's quite, it's quite clear how bad it was. The fact that I never thought we'd do it. I did, I did a video at the end of last season talking about, you know, David Moyes, talking about foundations and talking about how it, it wasn't that he'd laid these great for great foundations. David Moyes was going to have to build his third West Ham team. The David Moyes 2.0 would come to the end of its cycle. I remember saying, I said, look, I, I remember saying in the video, we, we might have to buy between five and ten players and I just can't see us doing it. And, and that's what I said. And I certainly didn't see us doing it under Moyes because it, it took so long. The, the Moyes and uh, Sullivan partnership in terms of getting transfers, they, they took too long. They, they were a the match made in hell in, in that sense. I think now with the dynamic with, with obviously Lopetegui, Stuyton and Sullivan and Nobles getting involved as well, it's a lot quicker. We're a lot more efficient. There's no doubt about it. But I, I didn't think we'd be able to buy, you know, nigh on 10 players. That, that looks like it's what's going to happen. And it goes to show you, if we're looking to bring that many in, how bad was it? It was bad, wasn't it? You know, we really did have a depleted squad. There's, there's no doubt about it at all. Well, look, we all heard the stats. It was the smallest squad in the Premier League and we were in Europe and it was the second oldest. I'm not sure how much we've addressed the age stuff. Um, but it, it, it looks it, it looks better. And there's no doubt about it. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. It looks a lot better. Uh, I think this is a good signing. A really, really good signing. They were very, very... Um, they, they, they were full of high praise when they were talking about him. 
and Sky Sports, talking about his technical ability, talking about his versatility, um, saying how they, they felt it would be the, the right uh, the right buy for Lopetegui, how they could see Soler fitting into his system. And, and I certainly, as I mentioned yesterday, I, I very much feel that we were over-reliant on, on, on Pakatar to... to do the creative passing, not the dribbling. We've got dribblers. We can do the dribbling stuff. Dribbling, long shots, that sort of stuff, we can do that. The creative pass, uh, we were a little bit light in that. So I think this this is the right thing to do. I think this absolutely makes sense. And, uh, well, most importantly, it looks like it's going to happen. And it may well be there could be one more after this. Look, it's a long way from being done. But as... I'm oh, not a long way. That's stretching it, probably. But as I said yesterday, it's following a pattern. And this now seems familiar. That the pattern that we're seeing with Soler is is looking like so many of the other transfers that have already happened this season. So uh, yeah, uh, not a moment too soon, really. Look, looking like we've got some real options. He just needs to. He'll start integrating these players into the team. Uh, no doubt about it. Hopefully, we we'll see a, a little bit more of an improvement against Crystal Palace. Not not that it was not it was all bad uh, against uh, Aston Villa, of course. But th there's a lot. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of work that still needs doing. Um, you know, to to get the team playing probably how we want it. But this will be right. We we hear that. He likes to play possession-based football. As I mentioned, after the Villa game, I saw a lot of long balls, not seeing an awful lot of stuff happening on the deck. This guy will help. There's no doubt about it. You need the players You need the players to do it. We, I felt we sacrificed the midfielder, really, by pushing Thomas Suchek so far up. We'll, we'll talk about that in another video, but I, I really did feel that. I think once he gets a more balanced midfield, this guy comes in. And, and don't rule out there will be times when perhaps he, he plays alongside Pat Natar, and, and that will be juicy. Just giving himself some some real options. And, and he's, he's shown, look, he made five substitutions the other day. He's shown that he's not afraid to do something off the bench if he feels, um, you know, the team are not performing as he'd like. So, look, happy days. Carlos Soler to West Ham from Paris Saint-Germain. Looks like it's happening.